Good evening, konbanwa, buenas noches. Today we're talking about once upon a time in Hollywood, the film and the book. Now, you guys know lately on the channel, I've been on this huge Quentin Tarantino kick. Uh, how did it start? I don't know. Oh, it was this video archives podcast. Then I read Cinema Speculation, which I really enjoyed. Uh, and then I just started watching all the movies over and I just bought this a week ago and I read it. I read a hundred pages just today. Um, this is 400 page. I loved this book. This was so much fun. And I just finished watching the film, the Blu-ray. So I have it all in my mind right now. Let's talk about Quentin, Tarino, Quentin Tarantino's ninth film, his penultimate film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, let's talk book versus movie and all that. So first off, it is a fairy tale. Once upon a time, tells us right off the bat, this is a fairy tale. This is, uh, it's not reality, call it alternate reality, call it whatever you want to call it, but the ending is definitely not what happens. Uh, but this is a made up story, it's fictional. So that's okay. Why I love this book. Once again, this proves this concept that the book is better than the film, even when it's the same guy. And I think this book is so good. Um, I love the ending of this book. I love all the, the more details, the history. You really learn about Cliff, how he's this big film fan and he's a fan of foreign films and uh, Kira Kurosawa and all these different things uh, that you learn about him. We learn more about Charles Manson in the book. There's some extra scenes, some other things going on. We see how he kind of like motivates these, these girls and influences them and manipulates them to do his bidding. Um, you know, kind of like a pimp, you know, and we learn there's just so many things in here that is so cool and it has a great ending. And when I watched the movie, I was like, oh, you know what? It's not, there are some flashback. There are some like kind of flashback moments. It's, I have to really think about it, but I, but from what I am gathering, definitely the book jumps time. A la, you know, like Pulp Fiction. Um, the movie I think is actually chronological. But the book jumps around a bit in there and kind of like inserts itself in spots. The book basically stops at one point and then the movie goes for another like six months after that because the book doesn't do any of the ending, doesn't do any of the Sharon Tate, the murder, none of that stuff. The book ends basically on that uh, first day of shooting Lancer. So when Rick and uh, Mirabella, who's the little actress, do their first day, they're getting ready for the second day of shooting, which is their big scene. And the book ends with them on the phone, working lines, and just some really cool stuff. It's, it, um, this is a love letter to the craft of film. I'm not saying anything unique and new. It is a love letter to old Hollywood, to 70s music, to Westerns, to acting and directing in the film industry. It is that story. And if you're into that stuff, it's great. And like cinema speculation, it references tons of movies, especially the first half of the book. There's all these different movies that it's referencing and mentioning and actors and things. And so me, a film nerd, I'm like taking notes and like, okay, I gotta go see this movie and I gotta go look this guy up and I gotta look at that because Tarantino is sp not even sprinkling, he's dousing this plot and story with like information about film, those who make it and those relationships about film. And, um, and it's just done just in such an artful way. Um, the movie is more about Rick and his struggles as a starting to get into that aging element to his career and how 
the how the opportunities become less and now he has to go to foreign markets and things like that to kind of recoup any kind of status um what's what's cool about the with the ending in the film uh the book does not cover is there's that scene when he's talking on the intercom with sharon tate and uh She's like, well, you want to come over and meet my friends and I'll buzz you in. And he's like, yeah, I've been wanting to do this. This is this is his way in. And when the gates open, the gates of opportunity, the gates to the estate, you know, the Polanski estate, which might have new things. And it's like the gate, the pearly gates are opening for him. And and I thought that was kind of a cool moment that he's like uh, kind of timid and shy to enter into their home and, and start up this new thing. Um, very cool. Again, you can't not read this book without thinking about these actors because, of course, I saw the, the movie first. So um, Cliff is such a just a classic character. You really learn more about Cliff in this book, too. I really like there's there's a whole section about um, the dog. Uh, I want to say the dog's name is Brandy. Brandy was a of. Uh, Fight dog fighter. What are they called? <laughs> uh, dog fighting, but uh, prize fighting dog, something like that. I don't know. Um, but it was like a a dog that went to these fights, and he got this dog and did that. And there's you know for months or longer, he uh, fought with this dog, and this dog killed other dogs. And you learn about that kind of world. Uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, what's also cool about this book is it also goes into the whole Lancer pilot. So that whole that whole first episode of Lancer that that Rick's on the set of uh, as the heavy is Caleb. Um, we in the book you actually we almost kind of read that as a big I mean, a number of chapters are basically Tarantino like telling that story. Um, in that style not as a script but just you know telling the story so that's kind of fun so it's almost like a little mini novella of some western which is really cool um yeah i thought the book was really it's it's a cool companion piece it's not a novelization of the movie that's that's my takeaway i thought it was it's not that at all it's its own thing it's a companion piece and now I really, really want him to do this for everything else because it was so freaking cool. I would love to see Tarantino do this for, oh my gosh, if he did it for Pulp Fiction and we got more scenes with Vincent Vega that would and Jules, that would be like the best. Now, as a fanboy, I would love that. Honestly, he shouldn't do that. He should do other stuff, but oh my gosh, that would be epic. Um, highly recommend this. Both the book and the movie are really wonderful. I mean, we don't even talk about the visuals of the movie, but they are one. His DP, everybody is just really freaking top notch. The writing is classic Tarantino, but it's it's a little bit more mellow. Like this is a movie you could see a little bit more with the family types, you know, with those who are not into all the the graphicness. I mean, there is some at the very end, but. It's definitely more of the mild compared to the last four or five of his films uh, go. But yeah, I loved it. It's great. There you go. I think this is it for Tarantino for a while. We've got other things to talk about. We've got a lot of comics I've gotten recently um, and other stuff. So this is going to be the end of our Tarantino rock block for a while. So thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Check out my Patreon, which all my stuff is there, my creative work, the film work that I'm starting up. So check that out. And uh, I have a couple of the channels as well, The Outgroove with Music and my personal channel under my name. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.